Hey everybody, live again. Uh, happy Friday to you. Going to be doing a um, card for the uh, Impossibles. That was the one that won, and uh, we are going to go from there. After I make sure that everything's working okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to share this over on the page real quick, and then we'll get started. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a landslide, plain and simple. It is the uh, Hanna-Barbera uh, Impossibles. So that was the one we were going to go for. And I'm going to get started on uh, knocking this bad boy out. This trio appeared with Young Frankenstein in the uh, late 1960s uh, as the Hanna-Barbera um, hero lineup. And they had numerous cartoons appear all morning long on Saturday mornings. They just owned it uh, for a while in there. And uh, these three guys are a band from the, the 67, 68 era. And uh, they double up as superheroes. They work for the government uh, at the time, and uh, they got called into action, and uh, the chief would call them, and they'd have to go on missions and things like that. And um, it was just, you know, typical 60s uh, quirky cartoons. But as far as the hero genre went, these guys held up against Space Ghost, Mitor, and all of the other Head of Iberia lineup, you know, um, it was one of those impressive things to where the cartoons actually had a uh, a deeper backbone to them at the time, and they made a point, you know. Um, I've been doing a couple of these this week, and uh, they've all come out really well. So everything seems to be really cool with it. We're just going to knock it out and have some fun and hang out. But um, I'm taking it kind of easy today because I uh, inked five pages yesterday even around the live card that I did for the um, Birdman card, um, I, I wow, I just wore myself out yesterday um, with this stuff and ended up, like I said, inking five full pages. And um, that is way beyond my normal three of the day. So uh, I wanted to get the Lone Rider book out this weekend and uh, finished up a... Uh, a self-help book as well, so I, I was just kind of fried, but um, original, not not extra crispy. I didn't push it that far, but uh, yeah, that was one of the things I just wanted to kind of take it easy today and give you guys an option to pick and uh, knock this out and have a little fun with it. Now, I don't know if, uh, a lot of people that remember this, but uh, I you know, I, I used to love these cartoons when I was a kid in syndication. Um, I, I was um, a late uh, 70s, early 80s kid, and I used to love to watch these things, and it, it was always a blast to get to see them uh, play out. So um, I have a strong memory of them, and they hold up even till today. You know, unlike uh, that Tiger Shark fiasco, Last week, <laughs> that I mixed everything up on, so um, I decided to, because uh, because I, I watched that show, I decided to change it up, and you know it just didn't hold up quite as well, and wanted to get out of that rut. But um, continuing the card series and getting back to my roots on it, and uh, knocking some stuff out as quick as possible, and uh, keeping them up for you guys to keep watching and hanging out and whatever. Um, also got something else coming up this week. Um, got the first layer of the, uh, like I said, the Lone Rider book is coming up, but I've got something else on the sidelines for you guys. I've been getting hammered about, um, doing a how to draw series and I'm putting up the first piece to that on Sunday, this, this coming Sunday. And um, I just wanted to find out what you guys wanted to see in that series. I need you to start paying attention for that and uh, take note and whatnot and let me know. And um, if you're on the page, that's cool. Give me a, give me messages on the page. But also on my uh, timeline, if you're on my timeline, 
And you know, if you're a friend of mine in the 5,000, go for it and feel free to message me about that and uh, let me know what you want to do. Also, um, I'm going to be moving into a different arena with it. I'm going to be specifically targeting comic book um, artwork and doing a lot of that as well as getting some of the social media and business stuff that I do as a professional out there for you guys to see to start building your brand and your images and stuff and um, go from there because I would really like to see a lot more independent guys get out there and get successful with this stuff and you know this is like I said this is my expertise area and I would really like to get you guys some help on uh, promoting that stuff but let me know what you want to see as far as that course goes because I've got uh, generalized stuff on it right now and I'm just going to start drawing you know from the fundamentals up and target uh, superhero art and I just want to know if you have anything specific you want to see let me know because I'm going to need to know that so that I can film it and show it to you guys uh, as requested but um, you know otherwise I'm going to be winging it as a, a generalized all overall course and you know if you're looking to get your stuff out there and get it shown I want to make sure that um, it comes out in the fashion that you guys want to see so keep that coming and let me know and uh, we'll go from there. But yep, 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 yep. That's where we're at right now. I'm drawing um, this stuff out and going to be kicking out um, Firestorm Origins finally. Got that colored up and done. I decided to uh, hand draw it um, and hand color it and just do it all that way instead of, instead of using the computer for colors or digital colors or whatever. And... Um, I got it knocked out that way, and you guys are going to get that this weekend as well. So that's going to be uh, a few pages of just pure bliss, um, if I do say so myself, because it's going to be a blast. Um, now, as far as uh, the card series, I'm going to need to know that you guys want to keep going on with this, because right now um, I understand with all the political crap, you know, the, the – the taking the knee and stuff, whatever your view on it is, which I don't, like I said, I don't want to hear that mess, but um, keep your political views out there, and I totally respect whatever angle you take, because I believe in freedom of protest and believe in freedom of speech, but um, <clears throat> I don't think it should take overwhelm to the social media like it has, but it is what it is. It's a modern voice platform, so whatever. Um, but with all that going on, I understand there's a lull right now, and um, I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, I'm still here doing these every day. And if you want to see something specific, ask me so I can put it on the list. So that's where we're at. Um, now, you'll see I'm keeping this very simple here. I'm not messing with this uh, costume very much because it is a very cool classic costume. And this version of Multiple Man, which is not um, the same as the Marvel Multiple Man you know, J uh, Jamie Maddox, uh, Medrox, actually, um, depending on how you pronounce his name. Um, there's, like, three different ways to do it. But, um, anyway, I am knocking out this red and black suit. It's very clean, very simple, uh, very easy to draw, and very fun to draw. So, um, just knocking it out and hanging out, man. Having a little fun with the drawing stuff. But uh, I, I made him a little more muscular than what he actually is because he's a tiny little guy. Um, all of these characters are really, really tiny. They're, they look like 60s, you know, men of the 60s. They were very, very tiny, very petite guys. And um, that was one of the last generations that actually had the tiny, skinny guy. You know, and then we... Um, we morphed out into the modern version of men, which is a little bit thicker, bigger, you know, stronger guy. So that was uh, more typical. But, uh, you know, back in the day, that's what it was. So everybody was really lean and, you know, uh, I don't want to say athletic. I don't want to say, you know, gangly. I'll say athletic instead of gangly because I don't think that they were, you know, any less strong or intense it was just that they were they were just skinnier built so you know because i mean even my granddad and you know that is now in his 80s i don't think i would go up and call him scrawny 
I mean, he, he might even stand up from the table today and try to take me on. And, you know, I, I don't think that I'd want to do that, even out of respect to the man, no matter how old he gets. Um, he was in his prime in the 60s, and I, you know, I don't think that I would have gone toe-to-toe with him back then, you know, even though, knowing what I know, because uh, they were also cut from a different cloth, even though they were skinnier. But um, <laughs> I'm going to quit digging that hole now. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's just one of those things, you know. Um, that it was a different type of build, and for me to do the, the typical superhero construct on this guy it makes him look a little uh, awkward, I guess the word is. Um, yeah, because he was a really, really skinny frame guy, and now I've got him all buffed up. But uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, the X-Men started in the 60s as well, and they they were all um, skinny kids at first. They were all, you know, t- um, very, very skinny and tight-framed people at first. And, uh, of course, they were youths, too. And these guys are in that same, that same uh, retrospect. They were youths at the time. So, you got to go with what you know, man. But, uh, anyway. Okay, got a big red cape swishing back here on this side, too. This is going to be black. And we're going to put that big M up in here. Because he had a big O M on his shield here. I'm going to kind of put it wonky because that's the way they did it. It had that 60s you know, retro vibe to it, so it was kind of wonked out a little bit. I always like that. Got to slow down here a little bit because I don't want to do the whole swish thing, as it were, with the uh, pencil. Now, if you're a professional and you're doing this for a paid job, don't do this with your pencils. I say this all the time, and then I end up doing it. But uh, these sketch cards are for um, this collection. So you really don't have to worry about that. And I, and when I ink them, I clean all this off and erase it. But um, whenever you're doing that, don't do, you know, don't do this and black them out this way because an inker will kick you in the shin. Um, for me, I do these all by hand myself, so I don't have to worry about that. But, yeah, if you're going to do something professional and you want to turn it in, um, make sure that you don't do that because, like I said, the inker will kick you. Um it's happened. It's happened. It's really happened. So, but to each their own. So, whatever works. Um, now, Multiple Man's almost finished here. I've got this uh, etched out. I'm going to finish up this shield here, and then I'm going to start in on Fluid Man and Coil Man up top. Now, when you guys see these, um, you're going to have to tell me, you're going to have to fill me in a little bit. What are your favorite things about these sessions? Because, I mean, I know you guys like to hang out and watch other artists draw and whatnot, and, and I appreciate you hanging out with me and uh, watching it. But, you know, I'm still not getting any feedback, man. Got to open up a little bit. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on, you know. Um, it's not just me here. Uh, you guys open up and start talking and having a conversation a little bit. We'll hang out and see what's going on. But um, <clears throat> anyway, we've got that set up. And I think I'm going to go a little different. I know he's got black hands. Uh, the gloves are black. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them red um, just to shake things up a little bit. Now, Coil Man, <clears throat> he was awesome. Um, I'm going to start over on Fluid Man first. But Coil Man was actually my favorite in this this series because of the fact that he reminded me of Curly from the Three Stooges, the way they drew him. Um, he was very round, very round-faced, and um, very um, Curly-esque in the way that he was drawn. I mean, he, the dude literally was round and looked like Curly from the Three Stooges. And, um, you know, I'm a huge Stooges fan. If you know that about me, then, yeah, you're definitely in my inner circle. Um Love that stuff. 
I'm a bigger horror buff, but I love comedy as well. I love slapstick comedy. Old school slapstick is just awesome to me. But uh, that dude actually looked like Curly from the Three Stooges, and it just used to bust me up to no end. <clears throat> but um, this is Fluid Man here. Real uh, heavy tactical names there. It's Multiple Man. Hey, he multiplies. It's Fluid Man. Hey, <laughs> he's fluid. So, you get the idea. And he had just a pair of plain old goggles. He used to crack me up. Just swimmer's goggles. It's just like, hey, swimmer's goggles. Yay, he's got he's got his eyes covered. Why? He's fluid. Ironic? I think not. <clears throat> but uh, all joking and silliness aside, this is what the dude wore. And he was pea soup green. Yep. When I drew this out and I showed it around a little bit, somebody actually told me that um, he looked a little bit like Danny Phantom. I was like, well, technically, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is that Danny Phantom looks like him. But, you know, well, we won't go there. So whatever works. So. I'm going to draw out the rest of this hair here. Let me adjust this light a little bit so you guys can actually see what's going on. <clears throat> Every time I rotate the card, I have to be careful to let the camera be sure and catch up so that you guys can get that. And I'm not going to draw in the F on his chest here until I ink it. He's got a big F on his chest for fluid, man, so we'll keep that. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> the way this tail works is just, just a couple of key lines here right from his rib cage. And then we just mark it in. There you go. Now, if I was to do this close up as a comic book, I, I would draw this way different um, because of the fact that the character has to be a lot more detailed and all that. But way back like this in this little bitty card, um, I'm not going to refine all of that out because I don't want to lose the detail that I do have for overworking this and over rendering. But now we get into the whole coil man thing. And uh, and he's not like this. Um, he has a C on his chest and that kind of thing. But um, in this version that I'm drawing right now, what I like to do with it is I just like to beef him up a little bit where it's a little more practical and a little more modern. But yet he's not... <clears throat> any more detailed than that because he's actually a big ball that's that's the way he forms when he turns into coil man he is a big ball with a spring his legs and um, lower body turn to a ball of coil and his digits here change over as well they change to a round ball type fist rather than the typical if you watch them in a the cartoon it, they would change into a a ball where they would tip up look like his hands turned into slinkies and then they would change over into this arm coil here where he would coil out from the shoulder And he was a tri-leg spring. That's what he had right there. 
put that connection on there. And he had this really cool fin on his head too, which cracked me up to no end. For some reason, it just always busted me up. I don't know. Um, I was a weird kid. What can I say? <laughs> I'm going to put in this kind of wonky mouth because he always used to make this weird expression when he jumped. And um, he was either smiling or he made this weird, weird, uh, awkward coil face, as I called it. And it was like his lip was coiling like his other extremities. Strange. Um, I need to turn it back this way so that I can put in the ribs. And I'm leaving this kind of open and animated, too, so um, it's a little cartoonier than what you guys are used to from my stuff, but uh, I want to make sure that I pay homage to the characters that I'm knocking out here, as it were. And with that said, I'm going to draw on the other side of this guy's head, and then I'm going to start detailing these out a little bit. So we can start seeing a little more of the characters. I always thought they should be more dynamic and um, more modernized in the um, remix that they're doing. But uh, nobody knows who's got the licensing right now. Uh, Hanna-Barbera's got everything up in the air because they licensed off their um, digital properties to a couple of different studios and uh, Cartoon Network still has copied the uh, properties of the of these characters for, for Boomerang and whatnot in the animated series the original animated uh, cartoons they still have those licensing and um, as far as the prints go DC has that right now with IDW's li sub licensing and uh, it's just crazy with what they got going on right now um, we have no idea where they're at so uh, I would love to see them come back and stay out of the uh, future quest. But who knows? I mean, it's just crazy what they're going to do with it. We have no idea. I did a little checking this morning on a few of these properties to see if I may have a chance of actually getting a hold of some of them. But with DC having first grab uh, due to future quest, we'll never know. Uh, that'll probably be in limbo forever. And uh, Boomerang, which is, like I said, a subsidiary of uh, the Cartoon Network, they still have the property licensing for the animated, the original animation right now, the animated series. So nobody can touch that either. So we're going to have to wait and see what they do with it. But uh, I wanted to put in a bid for it. But <clears throat> they started squawking and saying, you can't do that because DC's got first call. I was like, okay, whatever. So that's where it's at. I mean, it's pretty close. They were talking about rumors of uh, DC Comics having a new one come out in Future Quest, the second wave, and um, they never did anything with it. So I don't know. I would love to see some of these cartoons come back and um, really, really make a good go of it and be heroes properties that uh, DC could be proud of and you know that Hanna-Barbera could really bite into and you know maybe bring back some of the great comics and cartoons that uh, helped make some of the other properties that they have famous so who knows I'm just a cartoonist man nobody knows I don't know <laughs> I just work here. They throw me a sandwich once in a while, so I leave it alone. I just draw and eat my sandwich and go about my day. But uh, all joking aside, though, it would be awesome to see these characters come back. But you never know. You never know. And don't do what I just did there either. If you um, if you're drawing, don't slash your stuff. You know, back and forth. Um, don't grind. It's bad. Don't. It's a bad habit. Don't do that. I do that on these cards like this, but uh, I would never do this on a page because of the fact that um, 
it cuts into it and you don't want to have scribble lines and breaks and all that mess. Keep your lines very clean. It's a bad habit I've gotten into lately. I need to quit that. But um oh on a lighter note, uh Jason Kimball got his uh Black Panther piece, finally came through, and uh he was taking a picture of it earlier with his uh smiling mug on there with uh Panther in hand. So if you guys uh check that out, I'll you know you want well if you want to check it out, I haven't posted it yet. But if you want to check it out, I'll have Jason post his picture and uh, go from there so you guys can get a good look at that. And uh, we'll add that onto the page so we can show it off a little bit, show that uh, he actually did get his his Friday giveaway piece. Um, I have not heard from um, – I got Kevin's on the way, but I have not heard from uh, Tom in the last couple of weeks. So I'm guessing that he just decided not to uh, accept his. So instead of uh, the Ultraman, uh, I'm going to put it up for commission and sell that off. And if you guys are interested, uh, I'll give a, another freebie replacement for that and check the list uh, here in the next day or two to see exactly who was up for that. I think it was Noel, but I'll have to see and um, give him a shout out for that. Because, like I said, uh, Tom didn't answer. If he doesn't answer through the weekend, then I'll uh, put that Ultraman up for commission and sell it for you guys to see and uh, go from there. Hopefully he will answer. But uh, I don't know exactly what happened as far as that goes. He just vanished um, from my listing. And uh, we'll have to see if he shows back up or whatever. Because uh, if he doesn't, we got to move on. And uh, now I've got a really nice Ultraman that I can't do anything with. So I'm going to sell it off and uh, or give it to Noel if he wants it. But uh, anyway, you guys keep a lookout on that one. I'll keep you posted and let you know. Um, with this month coming up, I'm probably not going to be doing much of the Inktober stuff. But I will be doing this series and continuing on and uh, whatever and keeping everybody cool with it. Uh, if you want something spe specific, I do have commissions open. I am doing, for the month of October, I am doing 135 black and white, $135 black and white, 11 by 17 on bristles. And I am doing um, a special for $150, uh, shipping included as well. You can get um, a full color 11 by 17 on board uh, image of whatever you want. And um, I will ship it out to you once it's finished up. I'll get your approval process throughout the way. Um, it will be by design, though. I mean, you're going to give me the character, and I'm going to make up a couple of designs for you. You're going to choose from the design I give you um, as an option, and then you'll be able to uh, say yes or no. And once that's approved, once we start, it will be finalized, and that's it. Um, it will be required pay up front. And um, that's the way it goes. So, but you'll get that done as quick as possible because all my commissions are cut up. Um, all of my commissions are caught up except for one, which I have to send out tomorrow, which I was doing special on that because it was a character package and I was uh, working on the designs for uh, Lowry and I have to send him, he knows who he is, and I have to send his stuff out to him uh, this weekend. He's expecting that, thank goodness. And uh, that was a long time coming because I had a revamp on a character because of the fact that what happened was when, when I did the design, um, I had no problem with it. And then um, another company came out with a design that looked very close to it for a character of theirs. You know, you know how it goes. Once it's out there in the universe, it's out there. And um, when I did that, I decided to change it up a little bit and talk back to him for that um, a week or so back. And I finally got all those new designs finished up. So I'm going to be sending that out to him this weekend. But, uh, yeah, all my freelance and all my commission pieces are uh, locking down. What I've got on, on commission right now is um, open stuff for you guys, 11 by 17s. 
but I will be uh, slimming back on my freelance. I just finished up a couple of things so that I can get more into my comics and start boosting that up. I've talked about that over the last week or, you know, week or two or three, um, that everything's been slimmed up. And uh, I wanted to do some more commissions this year before the season ends, uh, you know, before the holiday season ends. So you guys, if you want anything out there um, drawn up that way, let me know. About the only thing that I won't do for that is uh, it has to be comic related, um, movie related, that kind of thing is fine. Um, the only thing I won't do is portraits. I don't do um, portraits on board. I just don't have the time or uh, the uh, the skill for that. I don't do a lot of photorealistic. I mean, if it's comic art you want, awesome. Um, if you want me to make somebody into a comic character, I can do that. But I don't do photorealism stuff, so please don't ask me for portraits and things like that because um, I won't be able to accommodate that, and I just want to be straight up up front because my style doesn't allow for that, and I don't have the time uh, in my schedule to do a bunch of portraits because then that would just take double time and double fee and all that, and I'd really rather not do it. But anyway, I rambled on about that enough. If you if you guys come up on the holiday season and you want something done, let me know because I'm open for it right now through the month of October. Like I said, 135 black and white, 150 color, and um, we'll go from there. So... Because I normally charge three hundred and fifty dollars for, um, I normally charge three hundred and fifty dollars for an eleven by seventeen black and white. So, um, I'll, I'll just tell you and that's normally a four hundred and fifty dollar um, color. So you guys are getting a, a heck of a deal if you get on it now. And I know a lot of artists think that's high, but the thing is, is that's I do commissions so rarely, um, the value on them is a different price line. So, but. Anyhow, I think we've about got this, and I'm going to put coil man's coiled C right here. I'm going to put that logo in there. We're going to put his C kind of strange like because it's on his chest here. Now, this is going to be white with light purple and dark purple he he changes up a little bit but i really like this guy and someone once told me that ram man i talked to uh, a buddy of mine hawk and um he told me that he knew the creators of you know he-man and whatnot and worked with those guys as his mentors and stuff and it was a great you know uh sideline that we had a sideline story we had going on and he said that uh his uh, his mentor said that they based Coil Man, uh, he, Ram Man, off of Coil Man for that. I found that pretty fascinating and cool. Um, let me see here. Anything else that I want to do on this real quick? Because I'm kind of running along here. Just want to stretch him out a little. But I'll I'll talk to uh, as a, as a returning side note here. I'll talk to Jason about posting his image on the uh, page. I don't want to just post it freely if you know I'm gonna freak him out or something. <laughs> you posted my mug, man! Oh my gosh! Because I'm kind of weird like that too. I don't like to have my face posted all over everywhere but yet I've got it on a couple places you know and if you go off and search Brad Linder on online in Google you'll you'll see my mug under the images it's like normally on the third row you know third or fourth place right there in the center of the page on the top line um, cracks me up to no end it's like there's my file And I've started to see a couple people stealing it. Um, one kid from Croatia stole it the other day and put it on his Facebook page and, and then messaged me. And I was like, man, really? <laughs> of all the people you want to steal on the on the Internet, you want to steal my face? But uh, whatever. Due to my programming background, I uh, I followed it back 
and found out where he was and told him to quit doing that. So, um, anyway. Alrighty. I think we've got this set up. And uh, we're going to call it cool. I hope you guys dig it. And just for just for giggles, um, hey, thanks, Marty. I appreciate it, man. Uh, just for giggles, because I've got some stuff going on um, this week. I'll, I'll do this one tomorrow. Just for you guys, I'll do it uh, Saturday. It's the first of the month. It'll be Halloween coming up, you know, here soon. Um, or is it Sunday? It's the first of the month. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll do this one tomorrow for you guys to knock it out just for anybody that wanted to see it, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, Sunday, I don't know what I've got coming up yet. I'm going to leave it wide open, surprise you guys, and um, we're going to go from there. But like I said, if you get interested in the commission idea, get, a, get in contact with me, and we'll go from there. Thanks for hanging out with me as always, and uh, we'll check you tomorrow. Take it easy.